adoption of sweet baby girl. A baby girl they've been wanting for a very long time. My husband Clay and I went into her when she was born. He was the first person to hold her. He gave her the first bottle. It was one of the happiest days of our lives. We had no idea that within the five, next five months would be one of the most challenging days of our lives. Claire went to see a doctor when she was almost five months old. She had a lump on her shoulder. He didn't know what it was. He took one look at her and he said, you know, I believe that baby's jaundiced. And he probably saved her life. He sent my husband and Claire to the doctor. They did blood work and they determined that she was in fact jaundiced. She was admitted to the hospital that day. We don't have any medical history on the birth family, so they had to basically perform every test to consider every possible cause of jaundice. And they tested for a week, and every day the tests got more and more frightening, until finally on Friday the doctor came in and he said, your daughter has biliary atresia. And that's an illness where the bile ducts don't fully form, and the bile doesn't drain from the liver, the liver fills with toxins, and eventually it's destroyed. The only cure he told us was a liver transplant. We were utterly devastated. We had never known anyone who had a transplant. I don't even think we had known anyone who had known anyone who had a transplant. And it was the most frightening prognosis we could imagine. We went down to the Medical University of South Carolina so she could be further evaluated. They did some more testing. They confirmed she needed a transplant. They put her on the waiting list. They gave us papers. And they sent us home. Through November, December, January, we watched our baby get sick. And there was nothing we could do. Her skin was a yellowish green. The whites of her eyes, they weren't white at all. She didn't sit up. She didn't roll over. She rarely smiled. She had never laughed. And she never made those sweet noises that babies make at that age the cooing and the chattering. She was just this very silent, sad little baby. And all we could do was watch. I'm O negative. My husband's O positive. My daughter is A negative. So we assumed we could be donors. And when we found out we could, we had hope. And he was tested initially. And they said, well, his liver was too big. And so I was next. And I'm somewhat smaller than this. And they tested me for several days. They sent me home, and they said, we'll call you in a week, and let you know what the committee decides. And so the transplant committee met, they gave us a call. I will never forget that phone call. And I was elated. They said I was a great match. They wanted to do the transplant the next week, and we were ready to go. And I looked at my husband, he was standing here across the room, and he didn't look near as joyous as I felt. And I said, what's the matter? Do you want me to do this? Are you okay? And he said, I absolutely want you to do it. He said, I just have to get used to the idea of my two favorite people being in surgery at the same time. A lot of people have told me that I was brave to get my daughter part of my liver. Frankly, I slept through it. <laughs> I think my husband has been the bravest of us all. And until I prepared this speech, I, I don't think I realized that. So, thanks. <laughs> so, we went to Charleston. And they performed the transplant. She's sideways, but you get the idea. <laughs> and the effect on Claire was instantaneous. She had always been very quiet. She had rarely smiled, as I said. And now, as you can see, with tubes and 22 staples in her tummy, which you can't see, I spared you that picture. <laughs> IVs. She smiled at everything. And we realized that she wasn't a sad, serious little girl. She was just a very sick little girl. And she felt good for the first time in her life. We got her out of the hospital after 10 days, which was pretty frightening. Took her to an apartment in Charleston where we stayed until we could be released. When the staples came out, she was rolling across the floor like nobody's business. 
one day, and we got used to being able to put her somewhere, and she'd stay there. <laughs> and so one day she almost escaped. Um, my husband had set her down on her blanket and had walked around the corner to the kitchen to get a sandwich, assuming the old player would just you know, lay there. And he got a sandwich, he came back around, she had rolled across the floor and was headed out the door. <laughs> and so she was, a, she was a new person. We brought her home after a month, and she was about, so she was nine months old, she was about six months behind developmentally. She had a physical therapist, she had a speech therapist, an occupational therapist, and she became, she got up to speak very quickly. Um, in fact, when it came to block stacking, they told us she was ahead of her peers. So, <laughs> really well. Um, she's now 14 years old. She made a whole Claire is now 14 years old. She won a gold medal in cycling. And so her transplant, she's 13 years out. And some of the details are lost to me now. that kind of faded in my memory, and I think that's a good thing in many ways. But there's one thing that is very clear to me now, and it's been clear to me from the beginning, and that is she was meant to be our daughter. And we were absolutely meant to be her parents. When I think of being a living donor, I realize that no matter what else I've done in my life, I've done one great thing. And that makes me very proud. It also makes me feel very humble. And the truth is, all living donors, and for that matter, non-living donors and donor families, have all done one great and amazing thing. And I'm just so proud to be part of this community. Thank you so much. I would now like to light a candle in honor of the